Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Crotty. I'm communications for the Greater Toronto Hockey League. I'm so excited to welcome you all to the very first episode of the GTHL's Breakout Podcast. We'll be sharing all of the stories behind our game and the people who make it so great with you right here. Um, we'll be starting off with um, a great episode um, with, and I'm so grateful to be joined by today's honorary co-host, Julia to Julia Tocheri. Uh, many might recognize Julia, who does great work as the Leafs Lunch co-host on TSN 1050. Um, she's also a content creator for TSN and Bar Down. Um, she's a graduate of Ryerson Sport Media Program and the former Mrs. August Steelhead's in-game host. But this is as close to home as it gets for you, Julia, who um, you're actually from Thunder Bay, uh, which leads us to today's uh, guest and episode uh, theme and welcoming Michael Power. So you're a former seventh round pick of the Edmonton Oilers in 1990, and now the president of Thunder Bay uh, AAA Hockey. So, and it's funny because keeping things small up there in Thunder Bay, you both actually know each other. Yeah, we definitely don't help the small town stereotype, hey? With, like everybody's connected somehow <laughs> up in Thunder Bay. No question. Thunder Bay is the epitome of one degree of separation. We often uh, talk about a Thunder Bay diaspora, which goes well beyond, obviously, Ontario. But uh, uh, Julie and I know uh, one another uh, extremely well through, uh, through mom and dad. Um, Julia's mom was a kindergarten teacher for my uh, two little ones, who are now 19 and 17. Uh, Grace and, and Carson both had the, uh, the, the pleasure and the benefit, uh, the privilege, quite frankly, of uh, being in class with, uh, with Julia's mom and we're indebted to uh, all of her stewardship and guidance. Uh, we love her to death. Well, and Julia, you're actually uh, fitting our theme too because you grew up in Thunder Bay, as we mentioned, and made your way down to Toronto and, and now you're co-hosting uh, Leafs Lunch. Yeah, and you know what, a big part of my, I, I did an interview recently with The Athletic, and, and the title of the interview <laughs> it ended up being called uh, How Julia Went from Thunder Bay to Leafs Lunch, so it's kind of like an interesting, um, yeah, it's an interesting journey, and honestly, I, I lean on my Thunder Bayness a lot in the big city. Uh, my whole kind of persona with Bardown is the the one gal from Thunder Bay, so I, I wear it loud and proud. <laughs> no, that's great. You should definitely be proud of where you come from, always. Um, so we'll kind of jump in um, to the Thunder Bay Kings road to the G, so to speak. And um, obviously on November 12th, the GTHL officially welcomed the under 14, under 15, and under, under 16, sorry, and under 18 Thunder Bay Kings to the league. Um, but before we talk about that, let's go back a few steps because it's been a little bit of a long process. Um, a lot of people don't know that the Kings were previously members of the North American Prospects League. Um, since 2015, which made them probably the most traveled hockey team in all of North America, arguably, um, going as far as Dallas and Denver. Um, and then, of course, along comes COVID-19, um, the border closes, and the Kings are essentially a team without a league. So let's, let's go back a few steps here, Michael, and let's talk about it. Yeah, it's a great summary. I mean, the Kings organization has been around for 32 years. Uh, Thunder Bay, uh, as I'm sure most people will be listening and watching our podcast today, you know, is, uh, um, you know, an, an integrated community, Fort William, Port Arthur, uh, by extension communities across uh, northwestern Ontario. It's a great hockey uh, community, great hockey fraternity on the uh, on the boys and the girls side. Uh, we've got Olympians uh, who've played in the Kings program uh, on the female side, uh, as well as you know many individuals who've gone on to win Stanley Cups. I think we've had some eight to 10 Stanley Cups in Thunder Bay over the course of the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, Patrick Sharp is one three, Matt Murray's one two, Jordan Stahl, Eric Stahl, Robert Bertozzo. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, so we're a very, very proud hockey community. And the Kings were born in uh, roughly 1988-89, it ironically was on the heels of Thunder Bay hosting what was then called the Air Canada Cup, the uh, Canadian National Championship for, for U18. I had the privilege of playing in it. So building sold out Fort William Gardens, uh, three 4,000 people. And as a result of the success of AAA hockey at the time, there was a gentleman by the name of Jim Johnson, uh, who for hockey fans will know the name uh, Greg Johnson, former captain of the Nashville Predators, longtime player in the National Hockey League, Ryan Johnson, uh, longtime NHL player, current assistant uh, general manager with the Vancouver Canucks and leads the uh, American Hockey League team. Uh, his younger brother, Ryan, a storied player at North Dakota. Anyway, the Johnson family under Jim's 
um, uh, leadership uh, created the King's Organization, which was truly the first time Thunder Bay, Northwestern Ontario, at least in the greater Thunder Bay area, had a true AAA organization. Up until that point, it was club teams uh, that were winning and going on to provincial and national championships. And in keeping with the times to play against storied franchises like the Toronto Marlies and the Toronto Junior Canadians and uh, the, uh, you know, the Toronto Red Wings and so forth, Thunder Bay needed to create its own AAA organization. So fast forward 32 years, we have 2,400, 2,500 alumni. Uh, already mentioned some of our uh, uh, individuals who uh, will go on to the Hall of Fame, I'm certain. Uh, many world junior champions and so on. And what we were doing for the first uh, 25 years uh, of, our, of our history is doing what most teams were doing in Canada at the time, which was playing in tournaments. So we would travel to Toronto and travel to uh, British Columbia and Calgary and the Quebec Winter Carnival and so on and play in tournaments and use that as uh, both an opportunity for competitive play as well as to uh, provide exposure certainly to our, uh, our players at the U15, 16 and 18 levels. Uh, we're now in a situation the world just changes, right? The United States has uh, really grown its game. Uh, the Canadian uh, uh, you know, hockey uh, community at the competitive level has grown and matured considerably. We see more and more private uh, schools uh, you know, blossoming. We see more and more leagues like the GTHL producing more a higher percentage of players uh, for the Ontario Hockey League and for, uh, for uh, the, the NHL, for the NCAA and so forth. So we had to keep up with the times. And so in 2015, in fact, it was one of my first board meetings uh, I attended, uh, we looked at our options. And Thunder Bay, as you know, is in the geographic center of the continent of North America, uh, but we're a long way away from uh, places like Toronto. And so the only opportunity for us at the time was to join the North American Prospects League, which is uh, one of the elite AAA organizations in the United States. Uh, as you've mentioned, uh, teams from as far away as the Florida Alliance, uh, the Arizona uh, AAA program, the Colorado Thunderbirds, uh, teams of the New Jersey Devils, St. Louis Blues, um, and, and, and so forth. So we joined that organization at the 15, 16, and 18 level. Uh, we had great success. Uh, we won 2018-19, the U18 championship, uh, the NAPHL. Our challenge again was uh, really not providing our players with the greatest exposure a, because the Ontario Hockey League is appropriately focused on players uh, in, the, uh, in the Ontario um, uh, geography and certainly in Southern Ontario. Uh, and secondly, the costs became truly exorbitant, right? We, are, we were the most traveled hockey team in North America, uh, the cost of the American dollar, and then as you pointed out, the pandemic. And so we truly became homeless for all intents and purposes. Uh, thanks to uh, the Ontario Hockey Federation leadership, the GTHL leadership, Hockey Canada leadership, our own Hockey Northwestern Ontario leadership, everybody recognized that we need to do the right things for our youth and find the right opportunity for these uh, young men and women who commit their lives, their parents who commit significant investments to ensure their, their children have the greatest opportunities um, available to players who choose to live in Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario. And lo and behold, Scott Oakman, Peter Curtis, our own Alex Viant and, um, and Jason Perrier came together and, uh, and here we are today. So it's a, a great success story. It's one where I think what we're actually doing is we're shrinking the province. You know, out of, uh, I think it was Winston Churchill who said, out of every, uh, you never waste a good crisis. And the pandemic really provided us with an opportunity to have dialogue around the province of Ontario and can we bring the best of Northwestern Ontario to the best of the Greater Toronto Hockey League and allow our players the opportunity to compete in a league that's only an hour flight away and mitigates costs for parents. Uh, it's safer. Our players are not on buses in the middle of January and February uh, and traveling the North Shore or traveling into Minneapolis where, you know, the, um, you know you're, you're competing with pulp trucks and so forth. This is a safe decision for our youth and a safe decision for our parents and, um, and the exposure is second to none. Well, and, and you said it perfectly, with everything that uh, goes wrong, there's always a little silver lining. And I think the pandemic is showing us a lot of those, and this is certainly one of them. Um, I want to go back to the safety aspect. I know Julia and I were talking uh, the other day that she reminisced about her playing days and mentioned, you know, traveling to Winnipeg. Julia, I don't know if you want to toss in what those days were like back in Thunder Bay. 
Yeah, definitely not as convenient as an hour flight uh, to Toronto out of Porter or Pearson or whichever airport you're coming out of. But I remember uh, specifically for for girls, like the Kings, of course, have the the league that you were talking about. But we exclusively went to to Winnipeg to play every weekend, and that that's a brutal kind of eight hour drive that way. And then the other direction you mentioned, Minneapolis, uh, the Twin Cities is a place that we went a lot, which is eight hours up that up that really tough route uh, along Lake Superior. So the, the safety isn't even something that I thought of when when considering this decision. But wow, especially when you think of um, tra tragedies that have happened in the past uh, with that amount of time on a bus, this, this is a real, that is a really good point in terms of uh, what a good call this was for the city. And, and it goes back to the partnership and we'll, we'll dive a little bit into the details here. Um, so the Thunder Bay Kings will be traveling to the city, the Toronto city, they're both cities, um, for seven weekends. Um, I know one obviously has already happened, the November 12, 14 weekend, which is the quote unquote official launch. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, the travel and the consistency that comes with this partnership, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. So what we were able to organize, uh, again, through uh, just exceptional uh, partnership and dialogue with, uh, with your leadership, the GTHL leadership, was a full uh, membership, so a full 28-game regular season. Uh, so similar to the Markham Majors and, you know, the Vaughn Kings and so forth. Um, and given the vast majority of the U16, U18 games have been scheduled around weekends, uh, which for your podcast members um, uh, makes a lot of sense because that's when the scouts are flying into Toronto. And so it was convenient for us and arguably convenient for the GTHL. So with uh, very few tweaks uh, and uh, the Kings organization in Thunder Bay willing to accept a four game, three day weekend, uh, which, um, you know, the onus is on the Kings to be in good shape and um, you know, get to bed early and uh, be, be prepared to, uh, to, to compete at a high level. So we fly in on Friday mornings. Uh, we have a partnership which we can talk about with Air Canada that we're very proud of. We fly in on Friday morning. We have opportunities for morning skate. Um, the boys uh, will get to the, um, the hotel if there's afternoon classes uh, or, uh, or homework. Uh, they, dig into, uh, they dig into that. Uh, we then typically uh, are scheduled somewhere around 5, 6 o'clock, and we'll see all three teams play between 5 and 8 o'clock on Friday night. We'll play Saturday morning. Uh, we'll have the afternoon, uh, much of the day on Saturday, again, for homework, uh, classes, follow-up, video review, preparation, just rest, uh, play Saturday evening, and then uh, we'll play sometime on Sunday midday, uh, and then our Air Canada Charter takes us home Sunday evening. So again, you put this in the context of the NEPHL and the thought leadership at the GTHL, the Ontario Hockey Federation, Hockey Canada. We were leaving on Friday morning to get to Dallas, to get to New Jersey, to get to Denver, to get to Minneapolis, to get to Troy, Michigan, and not coming home until late Monday night. So three days away from school uh, for individuals who are in grade 11, grade 12, preparing for high school graduation, all important marks and so forth. Um, just, uh, just a difficult, difficult grind. And here we're only out of school for one day. We're online on Friday afternoon and uh, they're back in their beds uh, Saturday at a reasonable hour or Sunday at a reasonable hour sometime around 1030. So, um, you know, the schedule just has worked out brilliantly. And, you know, all of those things are important when we're discussing, you know, youth hockey. There's so many things that goes in goes into becoming an athlete these days. And it's very significant to, to take into consideration, you know, academics, um, their well-being. And like you mentioned, rest that often is forgotten when we're talking about kids and we're multi-game weekends and all that stuff. And I know the story is that we all reminisce about those days where we played, you know, those tournaments with three games in a day or something like that. But um, with that, obviously, is comes the much-needed rest. So that's definitely a very important part, and that's great for the kids these days. Um, so let's jump into um, opening night. I think it was very exciting for everybody. Um, we had a kind of a mini media day for the players arriving, um, some interviews, some pictures. Um, we got a lot of stuff out on social media about it. Um, you can almost see the, the excitement on the players' faces. Um, but I know on, on ice prior to the puck drop, you actually mentioned it was a generational move for the community and for the region. And you noted that there are players on the Kings from 
multiple communities. So we're talking about Thunder Bay, but there's players from Kenora, Fort Francis, Dryden that you mentioned. So this is really a partnership that's making a difference for a lot of the smaller local communities up in th near Thunder Bay. Yeah, no question, no question. I mean, what we've been able to do together is, uh, as I mentioned, shrink the province. And we've been able to um, allow uh, you know, young, talented players who live in uh, really important communities like Dryden, Ontario, and Sioux Lookout, Ontario, and Fort Francis, Ontario. Uh, for those in the South that may not know, uh, Bay Street is home to one of the most important mining communities in the world. And a lot of that mining happens in Northern Ontario. And so the connection between the work in finance in Toronto and the actual extraction in an environmentally friendly way in Northwestern Ontario is happening every hour of every day. And moms and dads make decisions about whether Toronto for finance makes sense using my example in mining or whether they're up in Northwestern Ontario or Northern Ontario uh, and, uh, and doing their part to contribute to the success of Ontario's economy, Canada's economy, and indeed the world economy. And so to be able to give a young player from Fort Francis, uh, you know, Cale Nelson, the opportunity to play in the GTHL, be exposed and go on and live his dream uh, is just awesome. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's what we've been able to do. So uh, you're absolutely right. This is a Northwestern Ontario experience. When I say generational, it's generational uh, for a number of reasons, but if I can limit it to one, you know, our players today grow up looking, uh, you know, looking up to the Eric Stalls, the Jordan Stalls, Mark Stahl, Patrick Sharp, Robert Bertozzo, Matt Murray. I mean, as I mentioned, the number of Stanley Cups that have been back in our community is probably unprecedented over the last uh, five to 10 years. And this opportunity to uh, provide the exposure and the level of competition in a safe, healthy, um, and, and, um, you know, financially managed environment uh, is going to give the next 10 years of Eric Stahl, Mark Stahl, Jordan Stahl, um, you know, we're going to have the next generation of Stahl uh, brothers coming out of our community as a result of this move. And so we're not just going to realize the success of this year. Uh, Friday night was awesome. Uh, we had our first GTHL win in the history of our organization. Uh, the U18 team um, managed to come out on top uh, against the Toronto Marlies. You know, our U15 team, I think it was the last second, tied uh, the North York Rangers in a 1-1 game. Uh, and the Toronto Junior Canadians were just the, uh, the dominant force uh, at the U16 level on Friday night. But what an awesome experience. The number of scouts in the arena, parents were coming up to me after just overwhelmed, candidly, by the whole experience and really realizing that their investment uh, in their son or daughter was, uh, was, was going to good use. And I know, uh, Julia, you actually, um, you saw us uh, pump out the official welcome ahead of the November 12th opening night. Um, and you were very excited on Twitter. Um, what is that like um, being from Thunder Bay and seeing um, the opportunity that these players are getting? Uh, I think exposure is the biggest thing because two of the best players, I think, from the region that we've had, like, have successful OHL careers, like, is the most recent player to come out of the Kings organization to get drafted to the NHL, Tyler Tucker? Uh, no, we've had a few since, uh, but a uh, good example of one. Yeah, yes. like a long last, like not even a Thunder yeah. Bay kid. Yeah. Cole Timken had a great London Knights career. Uh, he's from Nick DeGrazia. Right, with Sudbury. With Sudbury. Yeah, yeah, he's playing Michael the first Stubbs. line in Sudbury right now. Yeah. Mikey Stubbs, Stubbs, my Steelheads yeah. boy. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, exposure is the biggest thing. I didn't realize what a different ballpark it was down here. Um, I mentioned to you, Steph, that my boyfriend grew up playing in the York Simcoe Express system, and he played five years in the OHL, did the whole shebang, and he teaches skating in the summer, and he has those skating treadmills, those things that look really fancy. He does the coaching on them. He has six-year-olds on those treadmills at, on some, at some point during the summer, so we, we, Thunder Bay produces so many naturally gifted hockey players, and I think that's obvious because Back in the day when all these highfalutin treadmill <laughs> type things didn't exist, we pumped out pro players at the same rate that Southern Ontario did. Now there's this huge gap in terms of development. The, like, the level of exposure kids get down here, uh, the level of training kids get down here, specialized training. Like my boyfriend grew up playing against Connor McDavid. Like how could you com compare that compete level to, to having to travel every weekend 
uh, to play any team you can from the U.S. So I think exposure is the biggest thing. How cool, like the scouts thing is is so cool to me. I remember going to my first couple uh, OHL games that I was working at and seeing all the scouts in the building and thinking it was the coolest thing and everybody else there just thought it was a, a regular Sunday at a Steelheads game. So it, it's a totally different ballpark uh, when you're from up north. Well, and that that for me was really nice seeing the players arrive. You could tell that it was just kind of a different atmosphere than they may have been used to. So it was really nice to see their faces. And that's something that you can definitely relate to, I think, Julia, in that coming from Thunder Bay, you moved here for school and jumping into the city full force. Um, but that excitement that kind of comes with somewhere new um, and, and just the new opportunity that I'm sure that they're feeling when they arrive to the rink. Um, I know when we were interviewing a few of them, they were very excited about uh, jumping into the competition here. So, Michael, I don't know if that was, I know we've kind of touched on it, but that was something that was top of mind, that just getting these players some competition. Because, you know, we love the game of hockey, but we do it to compete at the end of the day, and especially when they're at these levels. So I don't know if you want to touch on, on how important that was in this decision and this partnership. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, it's it's now fairly obvious as we look back on, on this work over the last 12 months. I mean, uh, no hyperbole. The GTHL is the number one AAA league in the world in hockey. Um, you know, we've done our homework. We've looked at the number of players that the GTHL produces for Junior A, for Major Junior A, the OHL, the NCAA, uh, the percentage of players that go in the NHL draft every year dating back to the 1950s. I mean, it is the number one AAA organization in the world. And if when you have an opportunity to be considered uh, to be a part of that, um, it's a no-brainer. Uh, then the work becomes, well, how do you make that happen? And how do you sustain that? And how do you ensure that we bring a level of competitiveness, back to your message around competition, that would warrant the GTHL seeing this as um, – a wise move for their member organizations and you know not getting ahead of our blocking and tackling but we had a great first weekend from our vantage point you know in our first 12 games we had five ties two uh two wins so seven of those 12 games highly competitive uh, the all-important u16 ohl draft year is the one that we really have to put some energy to and gthl it is the best players in the world so there's no question what we're going to see is uh, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds that are learning about AAA because we don't start in Thunder Bay today until U13, uh, so the 11, 12 uh, age group. But you look at the Adam level of players, the U10s, the U9s, the U8s, and they're looking up and they're seeing this is their future. And so rather than waiting to play in the NHL being their dream, you have a nine-year-old that's expressing, I want to be in the GTHL at 11. And we're already seeing the fruits of that labor. They can connect those dots. Oh, for Even sure. Even the OHL is hard to see. Like when you grow up in Southern Ontario, it's so easy to look at the OHL and be like, oh, I want to be there where we don't really have that vantage point. But now I'm planting seeds for my future OHL team endeavor for Thunder Bay that I have in my head. <laughs> anyway, I think it's a great idea. And if the Kings can be a part of that with you, uh, we'd, uh, we'd love to participate. No question. Totally. <laughs> Hey, we broke ground. We may as well keep it going. <laughs> yeah, totally. Back to shrinking the province. I think Mr. Branch would see Thunder Bay as a great hockey community. In the, I think so, the too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, that kind of, you know, joking aside, you know, it's, it's, it's a real reality that could happen, I think, sooner rather than later. Um, as we, we accomplish things like we are here in between the Kings and, and the GTHL. But I keep thinking back to, there's always naysayers, there's always gonna be critics to any decision. Um, and one of the main things that comes with the critics, especially when it comes to hockey, is cost. So as we're talking about, you know, the 13 year olds and the 12 year olds and the 11 year olds that are now saying, you know, I wanna play in this league. Let's talk a little bit about cost. Cause I know Michael, you've touched on, you guys have put together some really creative ideas to help with that element, I, I know that there's, you know, some raffle ideas and some prizing that you have on the go. I don't know if that's quite um, something you want to get out there now, but if you want to talk about some of the really creative ideas that you guys are putting together to really make this work in all areas for families and the players. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there, 
there is an acknowledgement that when you live in an area that is geographically isolated, um, if travel is a part of your work, if travel is a part of your uh, athletic endeavor, if it's a part of school, my daughter goes to the University of Western Ontario, um, uh, go Mustangs, uh, you know, there's travel that becomes uh, a part of the equation for mom and dad to get down and see Grace for vice versa. So I think, again, your podcast members can uh, can appreciate that and digest that. So the goal is recognizing those costs. How do we mitigate them, right? And and the two biggest costs to play in the Kings organization, as you can imagine, as the most traveled AAA organization on the continent, is air travel uh, and a hotel and associated you know accommodations, meals, and so forth. And so what we what we put forth to the GTHL, and again, I just want to commend Mr. Oakman and the board because they wanted to see that the costs were, uh, weren't prohibitive, uh, that this was going to be something that was going to be viable, doable, and, and sustainable. And so we were able to go to uh, Air Canada, uh, and Air Canada, you know, Thunder Bay has been serviced by and large by smaller CRJ type planes. Difficult to put three teams on one plane with 50 to 70 odd seats. Uh, baggage and so on. So you're flying commercial, you're separating your teams, price of airfare goes up and down, difficult to fix your costs and so on. And lo and behold, Air Canada just happens to service the seven NHL teams. And they have a charter organization called Jets, where they're flying planes, you know, West Coast, East Coast, and so forth. And we got, uh, you know, introduced to the leadership at Air Canada Jets, and we now fly an Air Canada private charter, uh, so our players put on their suit and ties in the morning like they're playing in the National Hockey League. They come, they stage, they get on their private charter on a Friday morning. They fly back on their private charter on a Sunday night. Our parents are with them, by and large, certainly our staff and so forth. And we were able to substantially reduce the cost because we could fix, if we could get the economy of scale of having 100 plus seats as opposed to buying 17 here and 20 there and, and so forth. Uh, so uh, that's benefited uh, players uh, significantly, parents significantly. Uh, great relationships with hoteliers in the greater Toronto area who just stepped up and said, this is such a great idea. Let's put the right package together. And remember, it's two nights in a hotel. It's not five nights in a hotel. Um, so the overall uh, price and package, I mean, for teams that are flying to tournaments, they know they're away for four days or five days. We go away for two nights. And so um, the overall price uh, has been uh, comparative, if not cheaper, than playing in the NEPHL. Uh, we're saving some 20 to 30% on the dollar on the exchange. Uh, and, um, and, and we're able to, um, you know, again, realize other economies of scale that go with having our skate sharpener, for example, in Toronto, as opposed to having to pay for the freight of flight, you know, shipping it all over the place, given we're playing in different cities at all times. We play out of really three arenas. The GTHL has accommodated us by and large at Scotiabank Pond, at Chestwood and Westwood, great locations. And um, we essentially have a home away from home. And I can't imagine how big leg they feel getting on a chartered flight in the morning. Like that is major welcome to the show. They must love that. Yeah. Yeah. We're uh, a few parents who were joking saying that, you know, introducing them too early to this, we it may be a little bit too soft by the time they're 19 or 20 <laughs> and they've got to go ride the buses in the Ontario hockey league, or they've got to travel all over uh, the continent for the American hockey league as they make their, uh, journey through to the NHL. Uh, you're right. It's uh, it's pretty comfortable. I said to uh, my wife Joanna, she joined me on the first week, and I said this is pretty civilized. Uh, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny. I was watching Julia as you were mentioning the charter, and it, your face just lit up, like so excited for the players. I've only been on a charter once in my life, and when I was getting on it, I felt like you know a rock star. So. To do it, to play hockey, it's all part of the experience, and I'm really glad that these players get to experience things like that. I mean, hockey at the end of the day is supposed to be fun. So um, from getting to the rink and, and your, being with your teammates and being in the hotel, it's all part, part of the whole experience. So that's great. Yeah, um, and, and to overemphasize, because it's important, <clears throat> it's truly important, you know, as volunteers who naturally want to ensure that these players all realize their dreams, whether that be 
uh, playing at a professional or an Ontario Hockey League level or going on and becoming dentists or plumbers or doing whatever they're going to do with their professional career. We need them to be safe. And, you know, it's worth noting that, you know, Northern Ontario is a collection of sister cities. And, you know, we're very proud of our relationships with communities like Timmins and Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie and so forth. Lots of history there. Uh, but for those that don't know, uh, you know, Sudbury is a 12-hour drive. Uh, Timmins is a 12 to 14-hour drive. Sault Ste. Marie is a 10-hour drive. And you do that in January on, um, you know, not a multi-lane highway. Um, you know, the, the safety aspect is real. And, uh, you know, we've unfortunately watched, uh, you know, situations where, you know, youth and, 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 and junior hockey teams have experienced bus crashes over the course of the last couple of decades. It would only be exacerbated in our market. So we looked very seriously at options of perhaps playing in the great northern uh, AAA league for, um, uh, for our midget program. And, uh, and it simply wasn't going to be viable from a safety standpoint. The amount of times I've had to explain, no, not North Bay, Thunder Bay. North Thunder Bay is a little bit further than North Bay. Well, it puts it into perspective how truly big our province is. I mean, I think they say that you can drive to Florida um, in half the time that it takes you to get um, up north in, in our province. <laughs> here. So, I mean, that's perspective for anyone that needs it. Um, you know, and I've had so much fun talking to you both, but one thing that I really want to focus on, I mean, the next Thunder Bay weekend is December 3rd to 5th. Um, and then there's a few more after that, as we wrap up this, this historic season for the Kings and the GTHL, as we, as we push forward with this partnership. Um, but as we move through the small steps and think big picture, um, Michael, what are you most excited for as we, we see, um, as you mentioned, the generations kind of move through this? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, uh, you know, for the competition. Uh, you know, I think our teams are going to continue to get better. Um, you know, watching the reaction on the part of the GTHL to having a chance to play against the Thunder Bay Kings, a new team, uh, is pretty exciting. I, I'm excited about many of our players have never been, especially at the U15 level where they're 13, 14, they've never been on a plane before. They've never been to the big city. Uh, they've never been to the Hockey Hall of Fame. They've never been to the CN Tower. Um, you know, the fact that we're bringing together such a, a cross-section, Canada is a multicultural community. And Northwestern Ontario has a different multicultural flavor than Southern Ontario. And so, you know, you have players in Northwestern Ontario who are getting uh, familiarized with, uh, you know, uh, players whose parents have grown up in India and in Pakistan in uh, Eastern Europe, et cetera, where, you know, our players are uh, learning and, and meeting and they're creating new friendships. In turn, I think over time, you know, we have a lot to celebrate relative to our Indigenous roots. Uh, and uh, we'll see more and more of our players from uh, communities north of Sioux Lookout and so on coming through the Kings program as we create this vacuum, uh, and they're going to get a chance to play in the GTHL and go on and, and realize their dreams. So um, that's something that I think is going to speak to the generational move here, which is, you know, a byproduct, I think a really healthy byproduct of two communities and two hockey communities coming together and doing the right thing for hockey, but the byproduct of this could be so much bigger. And that's great. And you know what, Julia, I'm going to toss it to you um, as you're hearing just truly the big picture of what sport and hockey tries to accomplish as we bring everyone together. You know, we always talk about the friendships that we make when playing the game and, and meeting all kinds of different people um, and bringing in all sorts of different cultures. It, it's really important. And I know it's something that at, here at the GTHL with our new strategic plan, we're, we're really putting at the forefront as we as we progress. Um, but just from someone who's from Thunder Bay, um, seeing the opportunity for that, any thoughts? Yeah, there is definitely a different multicultural flavor uh, here as opposed to Northern Ontario. Obviously, uh, our Indigenous roots uh, in Northern Ontario are strong, and the NHL and the OHL both definitely lack some Indigenous representation, uh, as uh, other than the names that we all know. And I think that there is... A lot, like I remember when I was growing up playing hockey in Thunder Bay, some of the most talented players um, that we had were Indigenous players. And I think that there's and there's financial constraints and a whole lot of things that, that go into them. Sometimes those players not going all the way. 
Uh, one that I remember specifically was a guy that I grew up with, Troy Williams. Uh, he ended up being drafted by the Saginaw Spirit. I think he's with Lakehead University now. Uh, and he's such a good adv advocate for Indigenous youth in Northern Ontario and, and hockey. But there, there's so much room for a million more of those kids uh, up in Northwestern Ontario. So I'm, I'm really excited for that aspect. Oh, for sure. And you know what? Um, it's just the beginning. We're so excited here. Um, and I know the Kings are so excited and we couldn't be happier to have you as part of our league. I just want to take the time to thank you both for joining us today. Uh, it's been a blast. We're looking forward to the next Thunder Bay Kings weekend, December 3rd to 5th. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Well, who knows? Maybe over time uh, we're uh, fortunate enough to perhaps look at a um, hockey day in Canada, GTHL experience in Thunder Bay. Uh, and we have the privilege of hosting some of, uh, you know, the youth in the greater Toronto area uh, up in Thunder Bay in a future January and maybe Hockey Night in Canada or Sportsnet wants to uh, participate, TSN wants to participate. It would be a great experience for our community and our kids. And I think for those that are participating in the GTHL from the Toronto side, there's so many partnerships that can come from this. This is just the beginning. Absolutely. Thank you both. Uh, and thank you to all our listeners listening to our first episode of the GTHL's Breakout Podcast. We're so excited to bring you so many more great stories like this um, as we continue to skate together this season.